Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching or listening to this. And welcome to this week's episode of the Non-Identity Podcast. Now, this week we're joined by someone who's advocating for men's mental health. It's Miss Mitra. Hi, Miss. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Lee. Thanks for having me. Before we get into the interview, uh, can you just explain to everyone who you are and where you grew up? Oh, absolutely. Uh, So I uh, grew up in India and uh, I grew up in a city called Calcutta. It's one of the four metro cities. Uh, in India. And uh, I uh, right now currently live in the United States for past 18 to 20 years now uh, in Michigan. And uh, my majority of my life uh, growing up until I would say about 24 years old, I was in India. And uh, what took you over to the US? Uh, Studies. Uh, I came here to uh, study, uh, finish my engineering degrees. And um... How did you find the change in culture? I think the change in culture is uh, different because, you know, like you you grow up in India having a completely different set of boundaries and uh, limitations and uh, cultural informations uh, that is a bit different uh, in, in here. Societal expectations that you get it from here. Uh, in this society, right? So there, there's that difference. Uh, so initially we were, uh, I was a bit of a, sh- a shock, uh, went through a bit of a shock because uh, one, I didn't know anyone here. I came here um, all by myself. So that was uh, one of the biggest uh, shock I think I learned to cope with for a while because you know when you're surrounded by an in- you know, Indian community, uh, when you're surrounded by a big Indian family, uh, I mean, large Indian family around you, uh, community, and then you uh, come to uh, Western culture where uh, really everyone uh, is by themselves uh, most of the time, and that was a bit of a adjustment for sure. And was your family supportive of you wanting to leave, or what was that bit? Of yeah, background? I mean, right. So I think uh, the reason I came here is to finish my engineering degrees, and um, my mom uh, actually sold her house after my dad passed away. Uh, so that I can get some educational loan and come and uh, get my degree here Uh, because um, I was getting my engineering degree in India. And back in the day, and now the rules have changed, but back in the day, the rule was uh, if you miss your uh, any sort of uh, semesters, even if you're in in your final year, you have to go back to your freshman year or your first year. Uh, And uh, the reason I missed it is because uh, of my dad's funeral of my, uh, in my sixth semester. So after that, I only had two more semesters left to graduate in engineering. Um, so long story short, like then of course I couldn't get to finish my engineering degrees, uh, but uh, my father was a teacher. And one of the things that uh, big for him was uh, get a degree. And uh, that was uh, the main reason my mom kind of pushed me. Uh, and when we found out there's a, uh, way to transfer your like what you learned and still finish up your degree uh in less in a couple of years uh that was a much uh, easier choice to maintain so she sold her house and uh, i came here in january 11 and uh Uh, Yeah, with the $200 and two suitcases, uh, that's all I landed in Chicago and basically um, started a new life. Wow. (laughs) And how scary was that doing that? You know, I I look back and I think um, when you're, I'm 40, I'm about to turn 43 now. And uh, back in the day, like I didn't have a choice. Uh, When you're back against the wall, um, you don't have a choice. Sometimes you're just kind of going in an autopilot mode. You're... uh, at a position where you don't, uh, there's no time for, for you to think. You just uh, take life as is and uh, kind of wait for the next step, wait for the next step. Uh, it was uh, partly scary for sure because without knowing anyone and what am I getting into, uh, but really looking back, uh, it was, there was not many uh, moments or time I had for even to think uh, because as I said, like, you know, when you land here, you had a, I only had one um, goal in mind, to get my degree, uh, to support my family. You're advocating for men's mental health. Is there a reason why you got into into the field of mental health? So um, I think my transitioning into uh, 
this side and understanding and uh, rooting for men's mental health uh, started off with my addiction. Um, and uh, so after my son was born um, in 2017, December, I was in my second marriage. And uh, there was a lot of that that I didn't process after my dad died when I was 23 years old. Uh, the idea everyone was like, I still remember that day. Um, I was crying and I had been told only one thing, man up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you have to take care of your family. You have to take care of your sister. You have to take care of the rest of the people. And I didn't quite understand that uh, back then I, uh, in my 23-year-old brain. And I just kind of went with it. And uh, that's part of the thing that actually what you just asked, you know, how did I feel? Uh, I didn't have, have any emotions to feel when I landed here because I only knew that I have to take care of my family. So the process of grieving, uh, the time, the uh, emotions you need to uh, gift yourself. I, I use that word uh, in a very... Uh, like emotional way actually nowadays, like you have to gift yourself the process of grieving. Uh, it's a gift because if you don't, uh, then uh, it will come and haunt you at one point. Uh, and you are taking away the gift from yourself. And uh, so after my son um, was born, um, without even understanding what's going on, um, I started drinking heavily. Um, of course, I was in a very bad relationship, um, and uh, before even I knew it, um, and now I look back, and it was a lot of gaslighting, a lot of uh, emotional abuse, but as a man, it's very hard to admit that you are being abused. As a man, it's very hard to even convince people that you are uh, being taken advantage of. Uh, because that's a society uh, that have created for us. Um, and rightfully so back in the day our patriarchal society have uh, you know shown us in the light of uh, we are the torch bearers and uh, we are supposed to be the strongest of the species of uh, homo sapiens and uh, we are supposed to be this whole macho uh, individuals who are not uh, supposed to show any emotions and it's very hard for people to even believe when a man is going through something like that in a marriage or in a relationship for that matter. And that can that abuse can come from anyone, like, you know, partner, uh, mom, dad, anywhere. Um, coming back to the story is, um, so I really started drinking heavily. And I, I realized it, that I, I was not doing the right thing. But it was as if, like, I'm actually sitting... I'm watching myself in a movie, you know, like I couldn't do anything. And it was just, uh, it went out of hand. And one day I remember uh, my son was almost six months old in June of 2018. And um, I was changing my son and I literally passed out. Um, and not because of my drinking, I just passed out. I started, I just saw black and I was blacked out basically, not passed out. I think that's the right word to use in this. Um, and then after that, you know, a lot of, um, things followed, uh, evaluation and all that, and no one could find anything. And then, uh, one of the therapists that we saw then through the uh, psychotherapy and through my EMDR, uh, module, they found out like, you know, I had been sexually abused actually uh, as a kid. Uh, but funny enough, again, uh, going with this whole man up culture, uh, I never spoke up uh, in seven for a duration of when I was seven. And it went on about like roughly, I would say, one, one and a half year throughout. And that I wrote in my book too, uh, that it abruptly stopped. At that time that was happening, then it stopped. Did you feel like there was something wrong with you? Because I know when people are going through them cycles, you get an attachment to the abuser and then the fact that they stopped doing that, did you feel like, oh, hang on a second? Like uh, I, I wrote uh, that statement in a, in a very small uh, word and the idea is uh, I was very, I was dazed and confused uh, because I didn't know what to think of it. Uh, not that necessarily I was, uh, of course, uh, I one, when that happened, uh, you are clueless. Uh, I think because abuse or physical abuse or sexual abuse uh, is something that uh, no one talks about. 
And uh, nowadays we are much more aware of it, but uh, growing up in uh, 80s and 90s, uh, and especially in Indian culture, it's a hush-hush culture uh, that uh, you're not supposed to say things like that. You're not supposed to experience things like that. And uh, a lot of that happened. And you you only can, as a kid, can only process so much. So there was a fear. And people who did that was, was my own family, uh, my cousins. Uh, and the idea is then you, you kind of take it up on yourself to hold back because you know you, you're afraid of what would be the outcome. Uh, and you grow up pretty quick, I think. And you have this sense of, uh, it's very counterintuitive, but you develop this sense of empathy for others. Uh, you know, I, I read this uh, quote the other day that uh, hero and villain, their stories are the same. Both had been wronged by the world. Um, villain choose to say that uh, I had been wronged by the world, so I will do the wrong to others. And hero chooses to say, I've been wronged by the world. I want to make sure no one gets wronged by them again. Um, and in my case, uh, uh, fortunately, um, you know, however it worked out, um, I chose the heroes in me uh, instead of the villain. And uh, I knew that if I spoke up, I knew that there will be consequences to my cousins. And from the without even knowing, I had this weird empathy and compassion that was created. I'm not saying that it's it's right. Uh, everyone should speak up. But looking back, these are some of the processing that I'd done. Uh, and I really didn't tell anyone. So now what the body did, body completely shut it down to, for survival. And although it was always in my mind, uh, it never really hampered or never really uh, got in the way of my living life all throughout these years. And according to my therapist, when they finally found out what's the cause of me blacking out is that it was body's way of kind of warning me that you are a father now and you have a son. And uh, if you read, uh, if you read the book, uh, Body Keeps Score, and I highly encourage everyone to read that, um, our trauma stays in our DNA and it actually stays for seven generations. And when I read that book, I mean, that scares the hell, living hell out of me. And I'm like, wow. I mean, so basically I'm carrying trauma from seven generations before me. Uh, I don't want my son to uh, carry that. So whatever I can do to help. And that's kind of got me into this whole uh, rabbit hole of this man up culture. Where did it come from? Uh, even during the time of all of this, I reached out to a lot of my friends and uh, all they said is like, you know, uh, go grab a beer. Uh, let's grab a beer. Let's talk about it or man up. You know, this is this is normal. This is this. This is that. And it didn't help me. And um, I was again left very confused in a world of uh, so what man up culture means and i think like a lot of us just lives life in live life in an autopilot mode we really don't pause and think and when stuff like this happens uh when you really question yourself uh on on things that we accepted so easily uh don't throw like a girl uh man up you know uh, boys don't cry when you actually pause and take inventory of that and process it. And you really, the the first thing for me, I, I was confused. I, really, I mean, I use the word very, in a very important way because it was a lot of confusion. I'm like, so then what's the what's the necessity of boys and men? Uh, what are what are we good for? Uh, I mean, I, I don't understand. We are so, we are being told that we are the one that provides. We are the one uh, that needs to protect. And so now what am I good for? Like, I don't understand. And uh, it kind of took me into a lot of research, reading books, um, interviewing different uh, professors of different universities and right around that COVID timeframe, because that's when I got, the, got my second divorce. And that's when I, I realized finally that, I mean, there was a piece of me that I think wasn't ready to admit. Uh, also, because maybe subconsciously, it's a very unconscious uh, life that I was living in a way that I wasn't ready to be that man to actually uh, raise a family because there was these unanswered questions and that led me to choosing the wrong partners, number one, 
And number two, uh, choosing the wrong uh, life, uh, the stuff that I also used to do, like drinking and you know partying and drugs and all that. Like, do you think because of what happened to you in your past traumas that sort of attracted you to the wrong partners and stuff? Because the type of behavior you need to have around you because of what mm-hmm. happened in your younger life. I think so. I, I think like you, you choose your partners or you choose your surroundings based on uh, the life you were you led and uh until unless you really pause and think that uh and i say this a lot nowadays uh our partners uh and our life it's not that what we want uh it should always be what we need uh we can want a lot of things but what we need is what we need uh so you create a lot of this uh blinders around you you create a lot of this bias uh around you that I need this specific type of partners or uh, this specific life. Uh, but is that what you really need? What your soul really need? You don't know until now, unless you ask this question. So when I asked that question, uh, the question was there, but the answers were everywhere. You know, I mean, it was just all over the place. And to understand which is the right answer, and that's what's very confusing because no one really taught us this. And especially men, because we are not allowed to express. Uh, we never express. We don't even know how to even express what's going on inside our mind, inside our brain. So for that, uh, you know, to having the right partner uh, when you grow up uh, as an adult is important because that's when you start realizing like how uh, you're supposed to talk, how you're supposed to communicate, because they bring out the that. Pr- parameter inside of you right because women knows that uh and that i never got that it was always met with ridicule anger sadness you know upset as if like i have to be this person who is the pillar of this joy and happiness for everyone else so uh you when i i I remember when i used to pull in my pull in the driveway no matter how bad and stressful day I had, I had to be like, like I would play a song and like, you know, like jazz myself up before entering the home. And even though I I used to question myself, like, why am I doing this? Uh, My partner should be my safe space. My home should be my safe space. And I never got that even from my, uh, like now uh, I have an exchange relationship with my mom and my sister. Uh, And having said that to, when I look back, a lot of this journey, a lot of this behavior, a lot of this uh, idea of not communicating, uh, as I said, like was already developed since I was being raised in different ways. Uh, although my dad had been my role model, my mentor, uh, he passed away when I was 23, right when I was about to get launched in the world as a man. And I never really got any answer then, right? Like I, I live by his principles, I live by his ethics. Uh, and he was an amazing father, amazing human being, but he could only do what he could do. And uh, I had to figure the rest of it out, looking back, searching through the wisdom uh, and different things that he used to tell me. And uh, those things are the closest thing that I had to start off with that, okay, he used to tell me this. So what does that mean? And, you know, that's how the journey started. And um, so the first thing I did, and as you said, uh, rightfully so, which you started this podcast yourself, uh, when your wife went through something uh, major and your life turned uh, like upside down um, with technology nowadays, like, you know, we can start something, a podcast and relate and create a community like this and hear other people's stories, not just to hear them, but also to understand like we are all in this together. Uh, and you don't feel, you know, you, you take yourself from a victim mode to a very survival, a very, uh, like there's that inner strength that comes with it, that others are doing it too. I'm not the only one. And you create this community around you. So that's how I started the, the my podcast journey too, where I was like, how many, I wonder if any anyone else is going through that. And sure enough, I mean, when I started my podcast, and that's exactly what I found out, and me to writing the book uh, in much more detailed version of what just really happened. 
how do you think, because I work in a school, and I work in an all-boys school, and obviously, in that environment, because the people don't like talking, if they're finding the work too hard, there's a lot of aggression towards staff or teachers. If they have, have an argument with, themselves, they, uh, with their friends, they won't say to their friend, look, what you said hurt me, they will they will fight. So what do you think like education systems could do to help support young men? Oh my God, you touched a topic very close to my heart and I'm writing, a, I'm planning, I'm actually in the process of uh, doing a rough draft of my next book, um, Dead Man Walking. Uh, and it's, it's so funny you brought this up because I tell my sons now, uh, uh, my elder son is uh, about to turn 13 and my younger is uh, six. He's just turned six. Um, and education system um, failed us. Yep. And I'm very vocal about it. And education system is still failing us. Until yep. and unless we parents, uh, as parents and adults, uh, take a grasp of it. Because it will keep failing us. Because education system is at a point where it's in the it's at the brink of failing uh and people will soon realize it give it another 10 years i think we are churning out a next generation of thinkers and creative uh people uh with the same mindset that we have churned out uh, uh during industrial revolution uh during industrial revolution after world war ii everyone was coming home and they needed a uh, security they needed a structure and that's exactly where the education system started like okay you read this you listen to this you follow a rule and you go to uh go work for someone because that's where the industrial revolution called for good enough it worked for them it worked for us our gen our past generation but if you see we uh, um uh, like when I say we, I'm talking about millennials, like I'm an 80s born kid. We are kind of in that transition mode. Like we are somehow uh, still holding on to our old generation's legacy. And then we are also seeing what our next generation is about to go through. And somehow we are just kind of meddling right in the middle. So unless and until we actually unifyingly talk about it and trying to change the system, in about 10, 15 years, I know for a fact education system all around the world will fail, especially in the United States at least. Uh, having said that, I went to um, all boys school, uh, Catholic Missionary School, St. Lawrence High School in Calcutta is one of the best schools uh, in India. Um, it was started uh, during our uh, British um, in British occupied India, basically, now uh, because Calcutta was uh, uh, our British capital when British uh, uh, occupied India. So I grew up around fathers and sisters and brothers coming from a Hindu family. So I learned the culture. So that's the that was a good part. But the other part also is when you are in all boys school. You are also learning the biggest lesson of man up. I was part of the soccer team. I would get injured and I would not speak up to my coach that, hey, I am injured. Maybe I should sit out in fear of I will not be allowed in the team because I will be perceived as weak. I mean, this is how, how we, we did and how everything is groomed and everything is... Uh, cultured in a way so the biggest thing that can now happen and it, you ask me how that, that that is a big answer the the overall crux the foundation should start off with how are we teaching boys to express right i talk about this me too movement and everything is great. I mean, rightfully so. Women needs their rights. Hey, I am all for it. But you cannot keep uh, going with Me Too movement without educating the other half of the society, which, which are boys and men. You cannot keep treating boys and men as a separate entity and telling them to man up when you are already fighting for women's rights. Guess what's going to happen? We're going to see the same effect that happened in the in our like in the past, because no matter what, segregating the two, biologically, there are differences. Physiologically, there are differences. Accept it, but you don't need to separate the behavioral pattern of it, right? Both of us can express. Both boys and girls can cry. It's okay. Men and women can cry. It's okay. 
it's only one big bucket, right? If we really start thinking as human race as one big bucket, right? What we have created for our own purpose, we have created that same one bucket into two. Now we have segregated, this is okay, this is not okay. This is okay, this is not okay. So we have created these different rules, unspoken rules. And everyone keeps following and following without asking a question, without even asking, is this right? And why is it happening? Because everyone wants to stick with conformity. Everyone wants to be part of the society. No one wants to look bad. Everyone wants to be like, oh, I get it. But, you know, this is what we did. What we did will not work for the next generation. I can tell you that. Because we grew up in a different generation. Our parents grew up in a different generation. And our kids will grow up in a different generation of AI and machine learning and complete different systems. They don't even need education, to be honest with you, because education is free now. Stanford University to Harvard University to Oxford University in London, everyone is giving away free education online. You don't need to go to school to learn. If you have the interest, if you have the zeal to learn, you can actually sit down and learn and actually get create an entrepreneurship. So the to having creating like creating a next generation based on our past education we will never get out of this rut it will constantly keep going and going and going until i'm telling you until the wheels fall off and then we will be at a very very dark phase of our lives at least our next generation would be i ask these questions all the time take a look around all the shooting incidents happen Show me if there's a single girl or woman involved. None. And I'm talking about specifically in the United States. All the shooting incidents that happened, all of them were boys. And I'm not siding with the shooters. But who is asking why? Everyone is asking, oh, uh, that boy had mental health issue. That boy uh, didn't get this. That boy. But why? We need to ask this why 10 times until we actually get to that first why that started it. Not just, oh, why? Because he had a mental health issue. He had a mental health issue. Why? Because no one listened to him. He had a mental health issue. Why? Because no one listened to him. And why no one listened to him? Because he was a boy. So we are constantly in this wheel spinning around. And then we are expecting things to change. Oh, ban guns, ban this. And again, I am I'm a person, I'm very like live and let live kind of guy. I'm not against and for. There are a lot of things I am very much, I believe in. There are a lot of things I'm like, everyone has their own right. Everyone is talking about banning guns, banning this, banning that. You ban one thing, they will find another thing. If you really don't work on the main foundation, foundational problem of boys' mental health, <laughs> these things will never go. And that's what we're finding in the UK, especially over the last two to three years. Our knife crime has shot up. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, it's not sort of the particular weapon. It's the reason behind why these incidents are happening. Do you feel now, the way the world's changing, that the word mental health's just thrown about left, right, and centre? So the best way I can put, it, put this is, um, yes, I think when good things come, the bad things follow it, right? Yeah. So now we are aware of mental health. Now we are aware of trauma. But guess what? Now everyone's talking about trauma. Yeah. Everyone has trauma. So now everyone losing again the focus. So the real trauma of someone surviving sexual abuse or physical abuse or uh, war. Now everyone has a trauma. Oh, uh, my mother told me something. I have trauma. I mean, that's not freaking trauma. That That's your inability to cope with your regulation, emotional regulation. That's not trauma. Same thing with mental health. Oh, uh, I didn't get what I wanted. Now I have a really bad mental health issue. What did you want? So again, when good things come, bad things always follow. And this is what my problem is. And I think everyone needs to be very aware of it. That stick to the main issues. There are a lot of distraction that comes with it. And some, I think, comes with uh, overall, I have a feeling the system set it up to get us common people 
to get distracted. And now everyone's talking about trauma. Everything is a trauma. Everything has mental health issue, which is actually taking away from the real trauma and real mental health issue. And then the cash 22 happens after a few months. Everyone is like, look, I mean, these are all being overused. So none of this matters. So now let's focus on something else. Right. So throughout the history, we had seen it like, you know, everything that starts off with something really good. Um, case in point, Facebook. Right. When it started, it was all about connecting people. Now, Facebook is literally stealing our data. Yeah. We are the consumables. We are the product. So there's there's bad always in it. But as long as we as a society as long as we who are actually questioning these stick with what the main reason we started this, that's what matters. Mental health for boys will always be an issue. End of story. Because we never got the platform. We never got the soundboard to even talk about our emotions. We don't even know how to express. Ask any boys, even my boys. I'm into in this field. When I sometimes ask them, they said, like, I'm fine. It's already like, it's like a record. It's like a radio, right? They're spending hours outside. They're spending maybe a few hours inside with us. And as much as we try to talk about it at home, they're surrounded by people. Even they are now part of the society. Their friends are making fun of them. So how are you going to stop it? So the only way you can stop it as parents, as, as a family, keep hammering these things down at home. Express, express, express. So this is why I don't leave my boys like that. When they say, I'm fine, I'm like, what do you mean it's fine? Define fine. I, I keep asking them questions until they break, break down. Because the problem is that leaving this, I am fine, led to what we have now. It's not fine. And I, I think like the biggest thing that happens also is women... You know, as partners, also uh, good partners, they fail too uh, because they don't understand. They fail to understand us because they don't know that a man is much more likely to open up to another man who will hold that safe space. Yeah. End of story. Because the expectation had been created that, oh, women will understand us. Why is that? How? Why is that so much pressure on that gender too? If I, I can ask that too. We do not have enough core group of men who can even think about holding safe space for other men. We judge too quickly because it comes from a competitiveness. It's just imbibed in our nature, right? It's imbibed in our nature. Case in point, they have done studies on this. A couple breaks up. A w that woman in that relationship will have guys giving her support, women giving her support. On the other side, the husband or that guy has no one. And there's a reason for it. Again, it comes down to man up culture. We are expected to be okay no matter what. Doesn't matter what goes through it. Your father dies, you're expected to be okay. You're going through a divorce, you're expected to be okay. Your kids pass away, you're expected to be okay. You lose a job, you're expected to be okay because you had been put in a pedestal which doesn't exist. It exists in our head that you have to be the one holding everything together. But that's not, and that should not be the case. And this is why the suicide rate is men is 76.6% all, all over the world. I mean, it's a man, a man is three times more likely to be addicted than women. So if that tells you something, men are dying of heart attacks left and right. There's a reason for it because you are holding everything in your body and in our body is our temple. So it doesn't get anything out of it. So you're gonna, either you're trying to cope. So now you're addicted. Now you have mental health issue. Now you're blowing things up. Or you're having, you're creating, you know, you're beating your wife up. That's domestic violence. Now you're incarcerated. So it's just a wheel. It, this wheel is just moving and no one's even trying to stop the wheel. Like, hold on a minute. Let us actually take a look at each section of this wheel and how we can fix it. Instead of just taking the wheel, be like, nope, just keep moving along. It's okay. 
because that's exactly what is happening right now because we are giving so much focus on the wrong stuff that it's a mental health issue. But start discussing why and start discussing solutions. Just having a statement out there will not help us. They have done a study that all these seminars and retreats and all this motivational stuff that we all attend, all by these gurus and teachers, most of them are geared towards women. Most of them. And then when you come out of it, the community that is created, women are creating the community to support each other. Men are not. They're just again moving along, waiting for another seminar, another retreat. I had done that myself. So throughout my podcast interviews and throughout those times of researching, that's what I found out. Like this is absolutely horrendous to even think about that this is the legacy we are leaving for our next generation for them to figure this out because we are done. And now then we ask like, uh, why? This is why all these boys are raised by single, most of the boys are getting raised by single mothers nowadays. So now you're creating, a, again, another generation of boys with the feminine characteristics. And I'm not saying I'm not dissing any woman in here. It's a good thing to have it. But you need a father to show the masculine side of it in a healthy way. You know, I, I love uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you heard about him. He's yeah. an amazing uh, psychologist. And what he says is, it's okay to be a monster. It's okay to be a monster. And I believe in it. because. Once you understand the power of how bad you can be and how bad you need to be to protect your family, then only you are a protector. And then only you will learn how to control that and to be the other side to how to love. To love, you have to know both sides. You cannot just love in peace. You also have to love during the war. And that's what we miss. We only that what is toxic masculinity? Masculinity is not toxic when you do not know how to love during the war you're going through yourself. That's when the masculinity becomes toxic. Uh, if you really uh, look at the Buddhist teachings, right? And um, I actually, uh, throughout my trauma, throughout my healing journey, and I still am healing. I mean, it's never uh, that journey is never ending, you know, like there are times it still comes back. And I, I and I talk about that in my book, too, that it's kind of like a wild horse. You think you have tamed it uh, right when you know you have tamed it, you're going to get on it and you're going to get a kick on your face like no one's business. Um, so the idea is now then to go back and try again and try again and try again. And that's life and that's journey. That's how it is. It's never going to be easy. Uh, but. The Buddhist teaching talks about yin and yang, right? The sign. And yeah. yin and yang is not constant. Sometimes your feminine needs to come more and your masculine adjusts. Sometimes your masculine needs to come more, your feminine adjusts. And your femininity grows in a man through loving touch of their mother or females in their life, uh, their wives, uh, daughters. And masculinity in men grows same way for girls too. Any humans, I guess, grows through father or a brother or a husband because that's how life is. It's not just one or the other. It's together working in sync. And when it's not in sync, that's when it's called toxic. That's when it becomes something that's un imbalanced. That's when it becomes detrimental in a way. So all these boys now who are raised by mothers, they only learn how to be soft. Now they're, they're either crying at the very first pain they have received or they are unprepared to even do anything outside of their home or in the society when they go out because they haven't seen how a man, how a role model should behave. And that's when happens, 
you are now picking up a gun. If anything happens, all you know is like, oh, this is how, how I need to be a man. Yeah. I talk about in my podcast, I talk, wrote him out in my book. Imagine, remember those back in the day, uh, those um, advertisements, Marlboro Man, this cowboy hat with yeah. cigarette. Just imagine that guy. Would you ever imagine that guy walking into a therapist's office? No. <laughs> Because that's what we are portraying as men. And that's what these kids are falling to, like, because they don't have a role model in their life. So they immediately go to what everyone else is doing. And so now we are creating constantly, again, as I said, this wheel keeps going and no one's actually stopping and looking at these spokes of this wheel in a metaphorical way. Uh, say, hey, you know what? We need to fix this. You need to fix this. And what um, can we do moving forward? Because obviously people watching or listening to this will think, yeah, what you're saying is exactly right and we need to change things away. But we're a small minority of people against like big governments and stuff like that. So what? how can we as a society help things move forward? Yeah, get involved. Um, I always tell people on the sidelines, screaming and writing books uh, will not help. So that's why I'm a very avid advocate of get involved in your, it starts from the foundation, right? Your government, the federal government or in the UK, in London, uh, your uh, parliament is right here, right? Uh, as, a, as a common man, you cannot reach the parliament, but you can definitely work in your city level, at your county level, right? See what the legislations have been passed. Um, uh, in 2021, I got involved in my son's daycare. I'm like, is every one of these teachers are ACE certified. ACE is the test that basically gives a teacher an identification if this kid, if any kid is going through abuse at home and they need to do it periodical testing. No one, it's not mandatory. Imagine that. You are taking care of kids and it's not even mandatory. So how, how the hell are you supposed to know that kid is going through some abuse at home or not? So I always say get involved. Staying at home will not get you anything. You can keep scream and shout and be whatever advocate and go out on a march with a flag. It doesn't. It's not going to help you unless and until uh, you do the work. And to do the work, to the, you have to be on the ground with the boots. And to do that, get involved. Get involved in city council meetings. Get involved in your uh, like legislation. Uh, write a letter to your governor. Like, okay, what are the roles? What what are the funding projects that we have for boys and men? What are the funding projects we have uh, around for women? That will give you an overall idea like, okay, so if these are the, some of the things that are happening for women, why are not these things happening for boys? So then you can actually, as a group, write a petition to your uh, local chancellor. It ha you ha we, as human beings, we as individuals have to be involved. Otherwise, uh, it, it's never going to happen. Brilliant. And um, obviously you've said throughout this interview that you wrote a book. Where can people find your book and get your books? Oh, um, it's on Amazon. Uh, it's Break Up With Yourself. Uh, how to unmask uh, the mask. Uh, how to end the cycle of toxic masculinity. And the idea, I mean, like, yeah, you can, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, Amazon in UK, Amazon everywhere. Uh, it's in Burns and Nobles. And, uh, but having said that, it's on Kindle, it's for free, read it, uh, because I wrote that book uh, with the hope of uh, really not as a, as a selling standpoint, I wrote that book with a lot of heart in it, that if I can stop one person to com stop committing suicide, because I was, I'm also a suicide survivor, uh, I was in 2018, I was almost there to end my life, uh, but I, then I found my community, my tribe through fitness and uh, that was a very uh, reason I, I wrote that book that uh, this book will at least will leave a legacy if not for anyone for my sons when they grow up and when they grow, go through tough times but brilliant uh, well we're coming to the end but it's been a fan, uh, fascinating conversation um, I definitely would like you to come back on in a couple of months time because there's so much more we could talk about oh, I know I know <laughs> But I'm going to ask you one last question, and this question I ask every guest. Um, your answer will not change your life journey so far, but if you had 30 seconds with your 13-year-old self, what would you say? Uh, stay resilient. Stay focused. Uh, there's nothing else. I, can, I, I don't regret my life. I really don't. 
at this point in my life, I really don't. Everything that happened happened for a reason and uh, is happening for you. Life doesn't happen to us. Life happens for us. Well, this, thank you so much for your time this evening. And it's, uh, I just love everything you're saying because I totally agree. With you. Like, as someone who's worked in education for the last 20 years, I can see where the education system's failing. Like, and your message about getting rid of this man up um, phrase and getting involved in things is, is great. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leah. I really appreciate it too.